So what's up guys, um, so this is a project I've been working on for quite a while, um, well really not too long, I've been, I've had it going for about, I'd say two months now, um, these are California banded geckos, and I set up this enclosure, and it's actually a pretty special enclosure, if you know anything about me. You know that I do a lot of scorpions. Um, I've been doing it for a really long time. Really enjoy it. You know, passion of mine. Uh, but the really cool thing about this cage is these guys are actually in a communal setup. And there's only two geckos in here, but there's something else too. Um, and, you know, it's kind of unorthodox or taboo. But it is a, let's see if we can find it. Nope, not in there. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah, you can't really see it, but. Mm. This is a... Vajovinus Hoffmeyer, or Spinigerus Hoffmeyer in there, and it is, um, a species native to the U.S., and also along with the band of geckos, and the two species, I know that's kind of a bad shot, and you can't really get a good feel for what they look like, so, yeah, here we go. Hmm. This thing never focuses for me. But, uh, there it is. That's the same species right there. And, um, this one was supposed to go into this tank with these geckos. And the other scorpion, which is a male, this is a female. And as being a female, you know, when I got her, she's prego, or gravid. Whichever word you want to be more scientific with, both meaning the same thing, really. Um, but these this species is really cool because uh, they have a symbiotic relationship in the wild where you can um, not well. They have a symbiotic relationship in the wild where they uh, live in the same burrows actually, and one will protect the other and the other will do the same for it what you know you kind of ask yourself how can a scorp or how can a gecko protect a scorpion it's a scorpion it has venom whatever um well the way that works is uh scorpions can't really protect themselves from ants armies of ants believe it or not ants are one of the most powerful um insect in the world and they are you know it's power with numbers, that's what it really is. And what the geckos will do is the geckos will eat the ants, while the scorpion will protect the gecko from larger predators that might want to eat the gecko. I think it's a nice tasty treat. Um, and that's kind of how their symbiotic relationship works. And even these California back geckos in the wild, they'll sometimes mimic a scorpion with their tail, and they'll bring it up over their back and kind of arch it like trying to make it look like a stinger so it's kind of cool the um first person who ever did a setup like this his name is uh mike and um you know i got a lot of tips and a lot of pointers from him i did did a good amount of research about both individual species and then i did you know i had to call a couple people up and talk to him, message him, PM him, whatever. Um, some of you are going to have seen this before. Some of you haven't. And the ones that haven't or don't understand what is going on in this enclosure right now, you're going to think I'm a mean, cruel person that subjects these geckos towards death. And you know what? Say what you want to say. I know what I'm doing right now. Um, with these enclosures, I've been keeping reptiles for a very long time. I've also been keeping geckos for, or, I've also been keeping scorpions even longer. 
Um, but the reason why that other scorpion isn't in there is she was pregnant, uh, gravid, and they can get moody. And I didn't want anything to happen to the geckos or the scorpions. So I thought it'd be best that I remove her and uh, not introduce her. But, um, so I'm going to wait till she has her young. And if she, if I didn't know that she was pregnant in here, which that can happen sometimes, she might have had her young and then the geckos might have gone to town on them. And then, you know, we lose scorplings and then we'll, you know, it, it could just be a bad situation if that happened. So I'm going to wait it out um, for a little while and see what happens. But, uh, this is, uh, it's a really fun project. I really enjoy doing it. And, um, you can see that there's plenty of hides. Uh, you know, I tried to make it specific to their burrows in nature. So, what I did was I used a sand mixture of sculpting clay and normal sand. Um, leaves somewhere, somewhere around there. Um, and you have to get just the right ratio. So the sand isn't too hard, but it's not going to fall apart. You know, it's going to stick where it is. But it's also going to be soft enough for if the geckos or the scorpions really want to get through there, they can make their own burrows. And you can see, like, the initial holes were made by me. There are... There is one, two, three four separate dens, um, different entry and exit holes, um, so, you know, there's plenty of hiding spots, but the thing is, is most of the time, they like it in this one right there, and you can see, uh, you can see where he's dug through, and he started his tunnel, um, you know, the, the scorpion's a real digger, actually. So, and that actually comes all the way out through here. And the geckos love it. Um, scorpion loves it. And they actually really do get along quite well. So, like I've said, I've had this coming for about two months. This video is really dragging on. Um, so, probably going to disable all the comments on this video. Just because I know I'm just going to get a bunch of nasty flack from people that just don't understand what's going on here. Um, but, yeah. So, that is the California Banded Geckos and the Vajovinus Spinigerus Hofmeyer Enclosure. Uh, peace out, guys.